Uh, hello, planty friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I thought this was gonna be a really easy video to put together because I saw the planted Carly flower on YouTube. I actually shouted out her channel on my community page probably a few weeks, maybe a month ago. Check her out if you haven't already. But she actually did this video and it inspired me to do this video. But this is the video where I show you all my plants that are in moss. <laughs> and I actually did not know just how many plants that I had in moss until I gathered them all around and it took me like five trips up and down the stairs from my Ikea cabinet to realize that I have a problem. <laughs> not really, putting plants in moss isn't really a problem, but it's a lot of plants. So I figured we just go ahead and get started sooner rather than later. <laughs> But if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. Also leave a comment down below so we can chit chat and all that jazz. So I'm not going to be starting in any particular order. I'm just going to be doing, going from my left to my right and making my way that way because we got a lot to talk about. First off, I'm going to be talking about this philodendron adivapuensi and he is in moss. I don't know if you can see all those roots. Yeah, you can definitely see them. And I actually have him on a moss pole and his roots are growing insane. And those are his air roots. Air roots, aerial roots. <laughs> They're growing all over the moss pole. Like that is crazy. Yeah, that is, a, that is insane. I love this plant because of the undersides are just so friggin' pretty and this is gonna be a common story throughout, but uh, I put him in moss because I had him originally in LECA and I rotted all of his roots. <laughs> I should really be doing a LECA update video because I don't have very many plants in LECA anymore unless they're Hoyas because I feel like Hoyas seem to thrive in LECA, at least the way that I take care of them in LECA. But yeah, this is my Philodendron Atipa Fuente. He's happy, he's vibing, he's having a good old time. This next one I have is an orchid. This is one of my Paphiopediums. Paphiopedilums? I never know how to say it. But I think he's so pretty. He's so great. Um, this is how I get most of my starts for my moss bowls, is I usually just confiscate whatever um, orchid has a leftover stick <laughs> in the pot and I take that and I just wrap moss around it or I wrap twine around it and I use that as like some sort of makeshift moss pole. Now this guy is really, really, really freaking cool. I love those leaves. Those leaves get me every time. But the way that I take care of this is I just fill the moss and if it's dry as hell, then I water her <laughs> because yeah, she is unhappy if I don't. Now this is the path, uh, you know, you guys know I can't see it. So th there, there's the name, do with it what you will. I got this one from Lowe's and yeah, I have one more path to show you and that do be this guy. He is not as vibrant as the other path. This is his name. Wee! Yeah, he's not as vibrant as the other one, but he is still unique and cool in his own beautiful way. And I'm so glad that I pulled these to the side because they are so dry like the Sahara Desert and they need to be watered. However, not however, but also, this guy is doing really good. Oh, you can't see. This guy's doing so good. He has this new little baby shoot right here. And I'm so excited because the first path that I got, I actually killed because I didn't water it enough. And I really, really liked that one the most, which is unfortunate, <laughs> but you just have to learn sometimes. But I really do like this one and the other one. I just like the other one that I killed more. I just was learning how to take care of it. I should have got one that I didn't care about as much so that I could learn the care tips and then get what I really liked. Oh well, <laughs> you live and you learn. Okay, so up next is this guy. He was just watered, so he is extra heavy in all the right ways. Um, but this is my Philodendron Melanochrysum. And you may look at this leaf and say, oh, what's wrong, baby? Nothing's wrong, <laughs> that's just one of the leaves that 
it came with and this uh, this leaf also is one of the leaves that it came with that it was unfurling when I got it and it just never really unfurled this is as good as it's gonna get unfortunately but these are the next two leaves that is put out for me in my care and it has a brand new growth right there that's getting ready to unfurl pretty soon if he doesn't rip himself I don't know if you can tell yeah you can't see that but he looks like he's thinking about ripping himself so I am spraying like misting the crap out of him to make for sure that he doesn't rip because it would just rip my heart in two if he ripped his leaf but he's also in sphagnum moss whenever I got him um, the roots were absolutely rotted and I had to cut them all off so I put him in moss to let him rehab. He sits in my Ikea cabinet. He has a good old time. His leaves aren't, like this is the one of the last leaves that unfurled, or no, second to last leaves that unfurled for the seller. And it's actually quite bigger than my leaf, not by much, but a little bit. So I'm hoping in due time, size will pick back up, but we, we shall see. Now this funky guy is my Philodendron Splendid. Now look at that newest leaf, it looks so good. This was the last leaf that I got and it was much smaller, which is even funnier because this leaf is bigger and then it got a little smaller and then it got really big. And I'm just so happy with how it is going right now. She is in moss, uh, you can't really see a ton of rootage in there which is odd especially because there's been so much new growth you would think that you would see a lot more root growth in the moss <laughs> I'm not complaining um, I think that the reason why this guy has gotten so big is because I have begun air layering it now this is definitely an eyesore to say the least but the roots that are growing in here are really really good there's a root right there that's just growing up the side of the moss and I wish that I really would have started air layering sooner I've seen people air layer air layering why is that a tongue twister <laughs> I have seen people air layering before and I just never really consider doing it for myself but I wish I would have a long time ago because this is literally the way of the future and I'm just so happy with how it is going. I can't wait to see this new leaf come out. I really love this plant. I got this from Botanicas. No, I didn't get it from Botanicas. I got a different one, a smaller one from Botanicas. I got this one from a different Etsy seller, and but also a very similar situation to some of my other plants is that it came with either little to rotted roots, like li either little roots or, oh yeah, I This guy came with like barely any roots because I remember the seller speaking to me and telling me that she didn't really see anything whenever I asked to see the roots. But yeah, I think she's doing really quite well right now. I don't really see any root porn that I can show you guys other than what was in the little air layer bubbles that we have going on. I really love this plant. Um, what? is a little bit different about the sphagnum moss and this guy as opposed to the rest is that I kind of have them in like some dirty dirty moss so that is whenever you take your moss and you kind of mix it in with some soil which helps provide a little bit of nutrients in with the moss uh, but I also still just fertilize anyway because I fertilize all of my um, plants that are in moss because I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, but I'm pretty sure that they don't really get any nutrients off of the moss and you have to provide the nutrients like you would in like a, but like I said, comment and down below in the comments if I am incorrect about that because I would love to clear that up. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I love this guy. I think he's so magnificent. So next up, I do have this bush of a dendrobium to show you guys. He is in moss and he is so dry, it's not even funny. I need to water him like right now. <laughs> um, but I've had him in moss since I've got him and he's actually doing quite well. I cannot wait to see him flower for me. I have yet to actually experience an orchid 
like completely bloom for me. But when that happens, it's gonna be like the Hoya blooms all over again. I just can't wait for that to happen. I just feel like that's just like a milestone that you get to check off and then your life is complete and then you can just die happy. But I, a lot of people don't really like dendrobiums because they don't really like their petiole stem, this part of the orchid. And I, it doesn't really bother me so much because I, I don't know, it doesn't really bother me. I kind of, I think he's kind of cute. I think he's quirky and I really, I think I purchased him specifically for the blooms and I purchased him because uh, this was a really, really good sized dendrobium for the price. I think I bought him for like $15 at Lowe's or Home Depot in one of those little small orchid sections that I'm always talking about. And a lot of the times whenever you buy from those sections you can get ones that are really quite small and for like the exact same price and so this was kind of like a rare treat that you would get one of this stature for that type of price so that's this dendrobium sorry if you hate it i like her maggie says she wanted to make an appearance so here she is she's been beasting and whenever i say beasting this is like that's like her version of zoomies for dogs. Oh, you love to change scratches. Oh, that's so good. Okay, sayonara, Maggle. All right. <laughs> now, if you are not new to my channel, you have seen this plant like a million times because I think this is one of my favorite plants, but sometimes I have a love-hate relationship with him because I love him so much, I want him to do so good. Like, I want the best for him. This is like my child. <laughs> He's putting out this gigantic runner out of freaking nowhere, but he is in moss and look at all of those roots. That is crazy town. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys can see all the roots right there. That is crazy town. What? <laughs> He's doing so well. I feel like he developed all those roots like completely out of nowhere. This plant and I have been on a struggle bus for a really, really, really long time. And he's finally putting out some really good leaves of stature. I think uh, he's getting a little bit too bright of light in my Ikea cabinet. So I'm going to have to figure something out with him to um, give him a better life situation. So yeah, I'm going to be cutting this runner probably today as well because I would like to see some new growth and maybe if I can get some new growth to happen, I can do some trades or some giveaways. I love this plant. I, Amedriums are like one of my favorite genuses, even though I only have two of them and one of them is just rehabbing. It's the Zippolanium, Zippolanium. I think it's a Zippolanium. And it actually <laughs> almost died on me and I had like put the whole like wet stick in one of my prop boxes and out of nowhere it started growing. It didn't grow for a really long time, but it started growing now. But I would love to find out more about the Amedrium genus because I really, really like it. I think that the plants are just so freaking out of this world and so cool and unique. Like, oh, I just love it. <laughs> but yeah, he's in moss, he needs to be watered. ASAP as well. Um, also a little tidbit, if you are thinking about converting a lot of plants or one plant into moss, do consider the environment that you're going to be putting them in because if you're going to be putting a plant into moss and you're going to like put them out in the open room and not in somewhere where it gets a lot of humidity and moisture, this sphagnum moss is going to be drying out very, 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 very quickly. And the smaller amount of sphagnum moss, the quicker it dries out. Because you gotta think about your air conditioning, your fans, whatever you have going on that is circulating through your house it is going to contribute to drying out your moss. So think about that before you do it. And if you're good with watering your moss like more frequently, or if you're putting plants in there, that don't really require to be moist all the time, then 
yeah, just just a little, little note for you guys in Moss because I had to learn that the hard way. And now that we're talking about that, I had to learn it the hard way with this guy, with my Hoya Imbricata. Now, this is, uh, this was one of my wish list plants for so, so, so long. I just love this Hoya. I think he's so unique. I just love really unique looking plants. This is um, a shingling Hoya and look how cute he is in the flat. But he goes into like a taco if he doesn't shingle up something. And this is where, this is how I learned that like sphagnum moss dries out like really, really quickly. So I put him on a board originally to climb up and shingle and have his foliage lay flat. But I was having to moisten that board every single solitary day. Now I am a planty person like through and through, but I have my limitations. And I had to learn that the hard way because I lost, I think, uh, one little vine and sometimes they would dry out. Any new growth that I would get would dry out and I had just to learn it the hard way. And so I transferred him into this little cup and it is sphagnum moss. However, I only water this guy probably like once a week and I wait for the sphagnum moss to get completely dry. Like right now, it's still just a little tiny bit damp. And this method has been working really, really well for me. There is missing a few leaves because I did forget to water him yet again, but he obviously bounced back and he put out those little leaves and he's put out this brand new little shoot, like those little tiny leaves, look at him! It's so cute. I just love this plant. I don't feel like it gets raved and talked about enough. Hoya Imbricata is so cool. Once you master how to take care of it and if you're gonna take care of it, I guess. But yeah, I love him. He do be cool. So while we're on the Hoya talk, this is my Hoya Macrophylla green form. Now, <laughs> the leaves on this guy has been like all over the place. Like, okay, so this is the original leaf. Pretty big, right? Then this leaf, they look very similar. And then this leaf still also looks quite similar. And then this leaf came out like funky AF and it's a little bit lighter, but that is probably due to my Ikea cabinet being just a little bit too bright of conditions. And then this leaf which I love. I think this leaf is so friggin' cool. It's like, it almost gives me Sarawak vibes with like how round it is and how veiny. Uh, I just love this one. He is also in some sphagnum moss. I have had him in probably, I had him in soil originally and then I transitioned him into Lekka, hoping that maybe he would grow a little bit and he did not ever put out any type of new growth for me while he was in Lekka. So I decided last minute that I would go ahead and put him into some sphagnum moss. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, he had a pretty good root system like the whole entire time, but he just wasn't doing anything. He was very, very stagnant. And even then, once I transferred him into moss, he still wasn't doing great until I put him into my Ikea cabinet and he just took off. He is so happy. He put out this whole entire tendril and this leaf since he's been in my Ikea cabinet before then. It was literally just a three leaf Hoya that was not doing anything. And I don't know. I don't know what I was doing wrong and I don't know. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know why he was so stagnant for so long, but I'm not gonna question it now because he's doing so great now. I'm actually going to be taking a nice little chop of this guy and a few other of my Hoyas and sending them to one of my planty friends because she has been so nice and so genuine and I just really, really love her. And I'm sure you guys know who she is, <laughs> but um, yeah. So this is kind of more of a prop and it's not like completely fully rooted, but <laughs> I really wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on this uh, Monstera Albo that I did a trade with not too long ago. 
and she's actually doing really really well there's no rot the aerial root that it came with is rooting really really great so it's just like that's just so crazy how like you can have one like horrible experience with the exact same type of plant and then a great experience with another plant I know Chloe from Planted in Provo, she talks about how the only time that she ever really had failures with her elbows was whenever she got one from somebody else, but every single time she propagated her own, like she knew the plant, she knew that it was healthy and thriving already, and it was just more successful for her. So maybe the, this guy was just from a more healthy plant than the other one. But either way, I am very, very stoked and very happy I just so badly would love to have a really big, beautiful Monstera elbow. It's just like a dream, but I'm so glad and I wanted to show you guys a little bit of an update and let you guys know that this guy is doing really well. Okay, so this is going to be my last Hoya. This is my Hoya Compacta, a variegata of the Mo Mona Loa. Mona Loa? Mona Loa. <laughs> Variegated. And I don't really show this guy very much, but it's doing really quite well. I put him in my Ikea cabinet and has like this new growth and this new growth. He's completely in moss and he's been in moss for quite some time, ever since I've had him actually. And I originally got him from my friend Emily from Emily Jean's Plants. We did a mystery plant trade, like unboxing together sometime last year. And she's still alive. She's still having a good time. Ever since I put her in my Ikea cabinet, she's been having a much better time, don't get me wrong, because I did have her in one of my prop boxes that gets a decent amount of light, but it could always be better. So she's having a much better time in her new location. And there is definitely a little bit of roots. Yeah, you can see the roots coming out the bottom right there. So that was my last Hoya, and I only have two more plants, one philodendron and one anthurium. So let me go ahead and show you, like, the best thing in the world. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this philodendron El Chaco Red, like, I'm gonna cry. It was so beautiful. This was my number one wish list plant. Oh my god. I love this guy so much. He's so beautiful. Look at that underside. I can't believe I have this plant. He's so cool. But anyway, before I just start like bawling, he's in moss. <laughs> he is doing so well. He's got all those nice bright red roots at the bottom. He's just been recently watered. I watered him last night. I will say that this plant is fussy. And when I say fussy, I mean whenever it is coming through its like new little growth point, you have to watch it very, very, very carefully. I had to, once it started coming out of the sheath, I had to literally keep my eye on it like day and night because it is so prone to snapping and breaking off because whenever it comes out, the the stem is like bent this way and then the leaf is like upright. And so it's coming out in a, such a weird angle that if it doesn't come out like perfectly, it is going to completely snap off. That is what happened right here. Like this was uh, gonna be my original like first new leaf but it snapped off and it was oh, so unfortunate. I'm pretty sure that whenever the seller talked to me um, and I had I questioned him about that little guy right there and about how damaged he was, he said that that's what had happened too, is that he had to help it out. I am just, I'm glad that I learned like with the other leaf that it needed to be helped the way that I helped it because this is just absolutely breathtaking. Like, I cannot, oh my God, I could just stare at this guy all day. He's just so big and pillowy. Oh. Anyway, he's in moss, he's thriving, he's having a good time. I'm just so happy with him. And last, but <laughs> certainly not least, is gonna be my 
Anthurium forgetii. My god, this leaf is way bigger than my head and he's got another new leaf that is still really nice and floppy that it hasn't hardened off yet so it's still growing. I cannot believe this plant. Like the roots are crazy. I just can't believe like how good he's doing. If you guys are on the fence about whether or not you want to get an Ikea cabinet, just do it. Like if you have philodendron and anthurium that are like not thriving and are crisping up or just aren't growing and are stagnant, the, the Ikea cabinet has been just amazing for me. And those grow lights that I have in there just are absolutely freaking amazing. And they just, I've had such a good experience and I just, I'm so glad that I have that cabinet. I'm so glad that people shared about it because it has helped my plant journey so, 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 so much and just help my plants in general. But I just cannot believe how great this guy is doing. This was one of my recent unboxings. Yeah, I think that this is one of the plants that I've gotten recently that actually did and came pretty well. Like there was no root rot, there wasn't any like trauma. I think there was like a tiny bit of leaf damage, but that's beside the point. You prob you're probably gonna get that with anthuriums anyway, whether it's gonna be, it looks picture perfect whenever they package it up. Anthuriums are just fussy that way. But this is my Anthurium forgetii, and I am in freaking love with this plant. I just gotta say thank you, Lucia, for showing off yours like a while ago. I think she showed it on like a video where she was talking about plants that she didn't like anymore, and she was uh, showing her forgetii, and she there was like a new leaf on her forgetii that looks so good, and I was like, I need it. And this was one of those plants that I was like. I don't really think I ever need it. But then you see a plant and you just fall freaking in love with it. I think it's more important to like fall in love with a plant rather than all of the plants of that genus because then you have more of a connection and I guess you're just, you know, you're more prone to taking care of it. <sighs> I just love this plant so, so much, so much. And I just wanted to give a quick little shout out to my two orchids that I have up here. They are just regular Phalaenopsis. I have them on boards and they are on sphagnum moss and they are doing quite well. I know whenever I need to water them because the foliage starts to go meow. <laughs> and then that's whenever I give the board a good little soak and I hang it right back up after they're done drip drying. Well guys, <laughs> that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to like or dislike, comment, subscribe, turn your notification bell on, what have you. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you again so, so, so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Can't help but feeling, just loving this moment.